Worship is one of the most important things we do together as a Christian community. The work of the liturgy shapes us and prepares us to do God's work in the world. As an acolyte, you play a crucial role in helping the community worship. In this video, we'll review what your work is as an acolyte at St. Thomas of Canterbury Episcopal Church in Albuquerque. It might seem like a lot to remember, and it is, but don't worry. You can work with a mentor until you feel confident to serve as an acolyte on your own. And remember, acolyting isn't the only way you can help lead worship. There are lots of ways to be involved. Your work as an acolyte begins before the service even starts. When your acolyting arrives no later than 9.45, check in here with the vestry person, get your bulletins, set them up. Next, you'll set your bulletins down on your seat, get the cross, and take it to the sacristy. Next, go to the closet in the sacristy, pick a robe that's the right size, and a cincture. So to tie the cincture, fold it in half like this, make a loop, wrap it around your waist, and feed the two ends through the loop. And then, if you need to, tie it around yourself again so that it doesn't drag the floor. You'll light the taper using the lighter. When you're lighting the torches, light the one that's closest to the sacristy first and then work your way farther away. Don't forget to bow or reverence the altar before you step up on the platform and again before you return to the sacristy. Once the torches are lit, you put the taper away, get the cross, and head to the back of the church for the start of the service. Okay, let's review your steps for getting ready. First, arrive at least 15 minutes before the service. Second, check in with the vestry person at the door. Third, bring your service leaflet, scripture readings, and bulletin to your seat. Fourth, move the cross into the sacristy. Fifth, get vested in your alb and cincture. Sixth, light the altar candles. Don't forget to bow before you step on, up onto the platform to light the candles and bow or reverence the altar again before you return to the sacristy. Finally, take the cross from the sacristy around through the atrium to the back of the church and get ready for the opening procession. Now you're ready for the opening procession. When you're leading the procession, start leading when the congregation starts singing. If there are torches or a second acolyte or other things, they lead behind the cross and following them will be the priest in the When you get to the front, pause, acknowledge the cross, and then go to your seat. Now you'll go to your seat and listen to the opening prayer and readings. Next comes the Gospel procession. The next thing is the Gospel procession. When the congregation starts singing the Alleluia or you receive the signal from the priest, you get the cross, go about five rows out into the congregation, and then turn and face the deacon. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. When you arrive at the proper place, turn and face the Gospel book for the reading. Once the deacon has said the Gospel of the Lord, lead him or her back out and return to your seat. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now you can relax for a little bit. Just listen attentively to the sermon and join with the community in the creed, the prayers, and the confession. At the passing of the peace, it's time for you to shift into action again. At the peace, you're going to turn off the microphone at the lectern using this button right here. And then you're going to pull the lectern to the side, pull it sideways, not forward and backward like this, because it'll tip over.
After the priest says the operatory sentence, it's time to begin helping set the table. After the piece, it's time for the offertory. When the offertory begins, hand the priest the vested chalice and the book if they ask for it. And then once they have the gifts, hand them the water. They will then give the water back to you and you will wash their hands using the water in this bowl. Drape this towel over your arm so that they can get to it easily. Okay, let's pause for a quick review. It's time to set the table for communion. You go to the credence table. You hand the priest or deacon the vested chalice. That's the cup with things on top of it. Then you hand the book and pillow. You take the offering baskets. You give the pitcher of water. Then you wash the priest and the deacon's hands. Once everything is ready, we say the prayer of great thanksgiving to bless the bread and the wine. We ring the altar bells three times during the prayer. Bells call our attention to the holiness and mystery of the moment. Then you as the acolyte, or you can invite a child to assist you, will ring the Sanctus bells at the appropriate times during the three times you'll ring the bells are after the priest lifts, lifts up his or her arms and says a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. After she lifts the bread and says, do this for the remembrance of me. And after she lifts the wine and says, do this for the remembrance of me. Next, we share communion. And now it's time for communion. Take communion yourself first and then hand the extra chalice and patent to either the deacon, the priest, or one of the Eucharistic ministers. After you've taken communion and given the chalice and patent, go and count everybody in the church and then write down that number in the sacristy on the post-it. Make sure to write down the date, your name, and the number of people present on the post-it, not in the book. After you've counted, just go back into the church and keep your eyes open for any way that you might need to help. If we run out of bread or wine, there's extra in this cabinet in the sacristy. To open the cabinet, there's a button on the top that you push in order to open. After communion is over, you'll help clear the table. You'll just receive things from the altar and set them on the creeds. After the priest offers a final blessing, you lead the people out of the church with the recession. For the recessional, the congregation will start singing the final hymn. You will wait for the deacon's signal, take the cross, and lead out. After the dismissal, you return to the church to extinguish the candles and return your vestments to the sacristy. After the service is over and after the organist is done playing, you'll come back and you'll extinguish the torches, going in the opposite direction in, from the way you lit them. And now, a few very important things to remember as an acolyte. First, as you move through the church, move with dignity, authority, reverence, and joy. You are ministering in God's house, and it is a delight. The ministry of acolyte is so important because you are essentially facilitating all the nonverbal aspects of worship. And so it's incredibly important that because you're not speaking, you use your body in ways that help the congregation feel relaxed and comfortable. So you want to move with dignity and with authority and without anxiety. You're keeping an eye on everything that's happening and helping it to run smoothly. Here is a hint when you're processing. It's really important how you use your body. So when you're walking with your torch or with the cross, you're not walking like you're on your way to the bus stop. And you're not walking like you're being chased by vampires, right? You're walking like you are in the presence of God, which you are. So your heart is leading, your eyes are lifted up, and you're walking with dignity and joy. Even when you're not doing a job as an acolyte, you're still doing a job. You're helping the community know where to focus. So 
So what you do with your eyes really matters. It means that even during the sermon, you should be looking at the preacher. During the readings, you're looking at the reader because with your nonverbal cues, you're helping the entire assembly know what is important, what is happening, what is the focus. It's customary to bow or reverence the altar in church, especially before you step up into the chancel. It's a moment to remember and acknowledge that you are in a holy place, in the presence of God. It can be awkward to bow when you're holding a cross, so you might just pause. Or you might plant the cross beside you and take a deep bow. You can reverence the altar with a nod of your head or a deep bow. If you're bowing with another person, make sure you're bowing the same way. And finally, most importantly, minister in a way that invites the full participation of others. Our job as liturgical leaders, whether we are the organist or the priest or the acolyte or the deacon or a reader, our job is to make it as easy for everyone in the community to participate as fully in worship as they can. That includes empowering other people to help lead worship. So as an acolyte, there are at least two jobs within your job description that you can give away. Keep your eyes open for who in the community might like to help. And these are two jobs that even a very young child or of four or five could help with. The first is as a torchbearer. Again, even a very small child could carry one of these votive candles to light the gospel book. We have three sizes of torches that depend on the size and strength of the torch bearers, large, medium, and small. Generally, if there are torch bearers, they help with the processions, the procession in, the gospel procession, and the procession out. Generally, they'll make a sort of triangle with the crucifer, with the crucifer at the point and the torch bearers behind them. And if we only have one torch, then the torch follows right behind the cross. Likewise. The altar bells. Even a very small child, with your help, can ring the altar bells. So keep your eyes and hearts open and invite other people to join you in the work of leading the community in prayer. Thank you for serving God's church through your ministry as an acolyte. Be attentive, be reverent, but have fun, and be flexible because sometimes things change. So notice what God is doing, notice what the community is doing, and keep up the good work.